Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at modelling with trigonometric functions so we can answer questions from exercise 7G. This just basically means we're going to be answering questions in context or real life problems. The cabin pressure P in pounds per square inch on an aeroplane at cruising altitude can be modelled by the equation P equals 11.5 minus 0.5 sine T minus 2, where T is the time in hours since the cruising altitude first reached, and all angles are measured in radians. So make sure your calculator is in radians for this question here. The first thing we're going to do is state the minimum and maximum cabin pressure. So, for the minimum, what we would like is um, to be able to subtract as much as possible from 11.5. If we look at this equation here, we want to be taking away as much as possible from 11.5 so that this number in total here, P, is, uh, is at its lowest point. And if we want to subtract as much as possible, then we want sine of t minus 2 to equal 1. The highest value of sine is 1, so we want to maximise that sine function. So, what you're going to do from this line to the next line is just replace sine t minus 2 with 1, because that's what it is when it reaches a maximum. And then just expand the brackets and calculate, and you get p is 11 psi. For a maximum now, we want to be subtracting a number as small as possible, and if we can even subtract a negative number, then that's going to make it positive and make the 11.5 even bigger, which will, make us, um, which will get us to our maximum value. So sine t minus 2, if we set that term equal to minus 1, the minimum value of the sine function, then we're going to have minus 0.5 times minus 1, which is going to give us exactly 12 psi. OK. Right, so let's get started on the next bit then. So find the time after reaching cruising altitudes that the cabin first reaches maximum pressure. So we're looking for it to reach maximum pressure. We've already worked that out as 12, so just replace P with the value 12, and then do a bit of rearranging. Oh yeah, of course. So we want the sine curve to equal minus 1. So let's do a bit of inverse sine. And we get uh, t minus 2 is equal to minus a half pi. And then add on 2 to both sides, which will make this positive. And we're going to get t is equal to 0.43. But given that we've got a question in context here, we need to leave our answers in that context. So it's 0.43 converted into hours, which is 26 minutes. Uh, note, so you might need to find more than one possible solution to the trig equation. It depends on what you're being asked. Right, so moving on to the next bit then. Let's uh, calculate the cabin pressure after five hours at cruising altitude. So that's nice and easy. All you need to do is just plug in T equals five. So substitute that into the equation and calculate, whoops, and you get 11.43 psi. And that's just as easy as putting it into your calculator. For the next bit, D, we're going to find all the times in the first eight hours of cruising that the cabin pressure would be exactly 11.3 psi. That's meaning that the first eight hours, therefore, T is going to be in between 0 to 8. But remember, with any trig function, if you've got anything funny going on inside your sine, cos, or tan brackets, you're going to need to adjust the range of your um, answers. So subtract 2 from both from all three sides of your uh, trig inequality, and you're going to get minus 2 is, is less than t minus 2 is less than 6. So now we can go ahead and solve this equation. We now want the psi to be 11.3, so set p equal to 11.3. Do a bit of rearranging here, do a bit of division, and we get sine t minus 2 is equal to 0.4. Sine inverse uh, to get your um, answer in radians mode, that would be 0 0.41, <clears throat> uh, which is equal to t minus 2. And now we need to find all of the other t minus 2 values. So we've got a marker at 0 0.4, that has a solution at 0 0.41, 
go across pi minus this answer we get 2.73 and in fact if you were to add or subtract 2 pi radians from there to look at other solutions none of these would be inside minus 2 to 6 so they are all the solutions that we get. So now all we need to do is add 2 to both sides and add it to both of the values on the right hand side and we get 2.41 and 4.73. And make sure that if your answers are in, uh, if your question is in a context, make sure your answers are in the same context. Make sure your answers are given in hours and minutes. Right then, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this one out. So we've got part C and D coming in the second part of this question. Right then, let's get started on part A then. We're looking to expand r sine theta minus alpha, so let's go ahead and expand that right away. It's going to expand to r sine theta cos alpha. We're using the angle addition rules here. Uh, time, I'm sorry, take away r cos theta sine alpha. And in this case, this is going to equal what we want it to equal, 0 0.3 sine theta minus 0 0.4 cos theta. So in this case here we have sine thetas on both sides so their um, coefficients must equal each other. R cos alpha must equal 0 0.3 and the same with coses it's got a subtraction both got a subtraction on it so we can just cancel those out from both sides and effectively then the coefficients of cos theta are equal so it's R sine alpha equals 0 0.4. So what we're going to do now, we need to work out uh, r first. So r is calculated by a bit of Pythagoras. Which is equal to 0.5. And all that's left for us to do now is work out alpha. So substitute it into one of the other equations. 0.5 cos alpha equals 0.3. Divide through by uh, 0.5 and we get 3 fifths. So therefore, alpha is going to equal, and we want it in degrees mode, so make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. How can you tell? Because your alpha angle it needs to be in between 0 to 90. Cos minus 1, 3 over 5 is 53.1. So therefore, 0.3 sine theta minus 0.4 cos theta is equal to 0.5 sine theta minus 53.1. <clears throat> there we are. Now the next part, part B, find the maximum value of this uh, trigonometric expression here. So we'll find the maximum value of this trigonometric expression here. For a max value, in this case here, because the function is positive, sine must equal 1. So therefore, the maximum value is going to be 1 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. And find the value of theta between 0 and 180, which makes this maximum occur. Well, a maximum occurs when the angle is equal to 90 degrees. So we need for that uh, on the sine graph, if you imagine the sine graph, it goes up then down. At the maximum point, we have a 90 degree angle. So we need to set the angle inside the sine function here to 90 degrees and add 90 degrees to both sides. So add 53.1 to both sides. So we get 143.1 as our value for theta where this maximum value occurs. Okay then, now we have the question for part C then. So just remember what we already have as this part here. Um, we're going to be able to change this into a previous result from the, from the other slide. This is question 2 of 2. Pause the video and try these two questions out. Okay then, so first thing I would probably want to do here is sort out this t. It's going to be t equals 
plus 0.5 sine, and then it's going to be theta minus 53.1, and we've already worked that out from part A. But it's not going to be theta, it's going to be 18x. So 23 plus 0.5 sine 18x minus 53.1. Okay, good. And x is the number of minutes since the thermostat was adjusted. Calculate the minimum value of t predicted by this model and the value of x to two decimal places when this minimum occurs. So the minimum occurs when the sine function is minus 1. So in this case here, sine is equal to minus 1. So therefore, the min value of t is going to equal 23 minus 0 0.5, so 22.5. <clears throat> when is this going to occur? It's going to occur when the, um, when the angle is equal to 270 degrees. Um, so let's set it equal to that then. 18x minus 53.1 is equal to 270 degrees. We could have used the minus 90, but if we add 53 degrees onto that, we're still going to get a negative number, and we don't want a negative time in minutes. The next thing we're going to do is uh, add 53.1 onto the other side. So that's going to give us 323.1, and then we're going to divide through by 18. So let's go ahead and do that. So add 270, and then we're going to divide by 18. So, and it asks us for to two decimal places when this will occur, it's going to be 17.95 minutes. Okay, so there we are, I've kind of used all my room here, oh well. Uh, calculate to the nearest minute the times in the first hour when the temperature is predicted by the model to be exactly <coughs> 23 degrees. Okay, so... What I think I'll do is I'll rub out what I've done so far so that I at least have some space to do it in. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're going to set this equation equal to, we're going to set t equal to 23, and then we're going to set the, so we want this in the first hour, so we're going to set t equal to 0 to 60. So let's get started then. So x is going to be in between 0 to 60 because it's going to be in the first hour but we're going to have to times this by a whopping great 18 um, so 18 times 60 is going to give us a huge range of uh, values here it's going to be we're going to be looking for angles up to 1080 and we're going to be looking for the equation 23 equals 23 um, plus 0.5 sine um, 18x minus 53.1. So we're going to have to minus 53.1 from all of this range here. So it's going to be 18x minus 53.1 and doing it 1080 minus 53.1 and we get 1026.9. So this is our range of values we're looking in between. Now, uh, cancel out 23s from both sides and we get a 0. So what we're effectively looking for is when this function here is equal to 0. So that's going to happen a lot on this sign graph here. It's going to happen at 0 and effectively every 180 degrees up until this point of uh, 1026. So, 18x minus 53.1 is going to be equal to 0, 180, 360, 540, 720, 900. And the next one would be 1080, but uh, that would take us above our limit. So now what we've got to do is add 53.1 onto all of these values. So it's going to be 53.1, uh, 
um, 413.1, 593.1, and 953.1. And now luckily we've got to um, divide all of these numbers by 18. So bear with me while I do this all on my calculator. 53.1 divided by 18 is going to first equal 2.93. Uh, 223.1 divided by 18 is going to be 12.9, uh, how many decimal places do we want this to? Uh, to the nearest minute, so we'll just write all of these to the nearest minute now. Uh, 3, 12, next one 413.1 divided by 18. which gives us 22.95, uh, which is 23. Again, 593.1 divided by 18 it gives us 32.95, so that's going to be 33. 773.1 divided by 18 gives us 43. Hmm, that 12 looks sufficient. I'm going to go back and check this 12 here. 223.1 divided by 18, and it gives us, no, that is right. Have I done the first bit correctly? Uh, no, it should be 233.1. Sorry, my apologies. 233.1 divided by 18, and we get 12.95, so that'll make it 13. Yeah, they all seem to have 0.95 on them. That's how I spotted that that one was incorrect. I uh, do apologise for that, but it's a good way of seeing that your, your, your answers here probably should form a pattern in some respect. And the final one, 553.1 divided by 18, and that's going to give us 53 minutes. So, on the dot, every 10 minutes on a 3 that ends in, uh, you're going to get exactly 23 degrees. Right, thank you very much for watching this video then. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 7G. Make sure you have a go at those problem solving ones, the exam style question type. And uh, don't, don't skip this over thinking that well the equations are easy, therefore I don't need to do it. It's a good, um, it's a good exam question for them to ask and it's a very common exam for question for them to ask. So make sure you're familiar with these types of questions. Anyway, thanks very much for watching.